Greetings, my name is Kerry and this is Kerry Louise Reads. Today I have my Christmas readathon TBR for you and as per usual with my readathon TBRs, I've kind of overly accounted for mood reading. So I have several options for every prompt in the Christmas readathon. I should say Christmas readathon is a readathon I host every year to help get in kind of the Christmas spirit with reading and to squeeze in lots of reading before the end of the year. This yeah, I have been joined by a wonderful co-host, Eva from Read While It Rains. She's a blogger and bookstagrammer. Her details will be in the description box, go and check her out. She's created some fabulous graphics because I'm not good at graphics and she is, so she's produced some graphics for us and one of them, which I'll put up here, is all the prompts. You can also find our Twitter in the description box as well, which has all the information you need about the readathon, but it's from the 17th to the 31st of December. There are seven prompts. The prompts are entirely optional. You can double up, you can mix and match, you can interpret them as loosely as possible, and you will see with some of them how loosely I might be interpreting them myself. Just have fun with them and get some reading in. Eva has also created a story graph challenge which if I can figure out how to do it I'll link that below as well so if you're on story graph you can join us on that challenge and you can add your books as you go along so I'm going to go through for each prompt what my options are some of them there are quite a few things and some of these books would probably work for multiple prompts but I should say as well all of our prompts this year are based on Christmas films so the first prompt is The Muppet Christmas Carol the best version of A Christmas Carol of all of the versions and possibly the best Christmas film in my humble opinion. Definitely one of the best. Anywho, so the prompt for this is a book featuring ghosts or time travel and I have two options for this. So the first option is a book that my friend Penny has lent me. Hi Penny, if you happen to be watching. <laughs> so this is Gallant by V.E. Schwab. The only V.E. Schwab I've read so far is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, which I really, really loved. There are ghouls in it, which I'm interpreting to be ghosts, really. So I don't know much about it, apart from that it is meant to be a bit creepy. I'm keen to read more V.E. Schwab because I loved Addie LaRue. I'm keen to see how I get on with others of her books. So. I might very well pick this one up so I can give it back to you, Penny because I have so many of her books at the moment. She has loads of mine too so you know it's equal. So that was a ghosts option. The other one I might pick up is a time travel option which is Kindred by Octavia Butler. This is from what I understand about a young woman, young black woman who is transported back to the time of slavery. I've heard only good things about it. I've heard it's a difficult read but a very important book. I've been meaning to pick this up for such a long time. I've had this copy for ages. One of those things that I'm not sure why I haven't got around to it yet but definitely want to get to it soon. So that's my other option for that. If I have time I might read both because then I've done a ghost and time travel book but <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how it goes. The next prompt is based on the film The Polar Express and this is a book with a journey in it and again I have two options for this although some of the other ones in my pile actually probably would work for this too. So my first option is one I've got out from the library. This is Exit West by Mossim Hamid. I've had this out for a really long time and I really need to read it and take it back. I got this out because I like podcasts. I like bookish podcasts and there's one where <laughs> they alternate interviewing someone about their choice in books and then the next episode they talk about a book together and I listened to the first episode of it and I was like oh that sounds really cool I'll get out the book so I could read it and before I listen to the second episode and this was the book and like it's been I think probably a year <laughs> since I listened to that first episode and like there are so many episodes I really want to actually get a move on with this podcast but it's gonna take me ages if it takes me this long to read each book so anyway so this one I'm loosely interpreting it as including travel it has like doors that appear and you go through the door and you end up in a different country I think is the idea the concept behind it and it was shortlisted for the man booker prize which is usually a good sign it's quite short as well and actually it's got quite big font which would be helpful if I just need to get through something quickly because I'm running out of time, which may well happen. So that's most likely one for that. But the other one is one that I definitely want to try and get to before the end of the year. It's on my series I want to finish list, as are a few others coming up in this panel in a little bit. This one, I basically had three books that 
could loosely fit two of the prompts and I divided them up. I'm not entirely sure I've divided them the right way. And there are all three books that will finish series for me that are on my series to finish list. Anyway, so the one I've gone for as being one featuring a journey is The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemison. This is the final book in the Broken Earth trilogy. I don't know what I can say about it without giving too much away, but it's speculative fiction set in a kind of distant future where everything's a mess. It's quite apocalyptic and there are people who have the ability to, they're called origins, so they have ability to interact with the earth and rocks and there are things called obelisks. I basically need to read this before I forget too much about the second book. The stories are so complex and so much happens in them and they're really mind-blowing. Like the first two books in the series featured journey aspects so I'm assuming this one does. The other prompt that this might work from is multiple perspectives because the second book was told from multiple perspectives. It's a prompt coming up in a minute. So if it doesn't actually fit for the journeys one it would fit for that one probably. The third prompt is Home Alone which is a book featuring thieves, con artists or tricksters. So I had a few ideas for this. The one that fits the prompt best I think is Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. This would be a reread for me. I have the other two books in this trilogy. The third one, Lachlan's, came out this year. This is the only one I've read so far and I was going to pick up Shawful, the second one, earlier in the year and realised that actually I didn't really remember this one well enough to carry on the, with the series without rereading this one. I would potentially pick this one up so that I can carry on the series next year but I will probably try and read the series next year anyway. I think it's going on my series to finish list for next year because I have already read this one. The central character in this, Sancha, is a thief. So that's the one that fits the prompt best, but actually probably the one I'm least likely to go for because it's a reread and I actually kind of want to get through some of the stuff on my TBR. Although it will help to read this because then it will help me get onto two more books on my TBR, but never mind. The other two options are both more on the like con artist kind of line. They're both thrillers and they're both ones where someone is not quite what they seem. So whether it strictly counts, I mean, it's my readathon, so I <laughs> I can do what I want with the prompts. So the first one is a Split Second by Sophie McKenzie. I do want to pick this one up because this is the first book my fiancé bought me as a present. He saw it in a charity shop and thought I would like it. It's a young adult thriller, I believe. It's about a young woman who her life is changed by a terrorist bomb and then she meets someone who was affected by the same incident and things develop from there. This one actually also looks like it's told from multiple perspectives so it might work for that prompt too. I don't know much about it. Again it's got quite big print and it's not that long so it might be a really quick one to read. Yeah I might take this one to read on Christmas Eve for Yola Bokaflod. <laughs> we will see but I'm excited to pick this one up. And then the other one also is kind of in the thriller line. This is Lullaby by Leila Slimani. This has been on a number of TBRs this year and I keep just not quite getting around to it. It's another one that's fairly short, so it should be a quick one to pick up. This is about a couple in Paris who hire a nanny to look after their children, but things aren't quite what they seem with her. And it's a yeah, kind of a family thriller. I read The Country of Others by Leila Soleimani last year, which is a historical fiction. This is a slightly different genre from her and I'm really interested to see how she does a slightly different genre to what I've read from her before. This was actually her first book though, I think. And it won the Prix Goncourt, which is a important literary prize in France. The next prompt is based on Love Actually, and it is a book told from multiple points of view. I've already mentioned a couple that would work for that. Actually, I think quite a few of these would work. I think Foundry Side probably would as well. But the two that I've kind of focused on for this are two more that would complete series for me and the earlier books in the series were told from multiple points of view so I'm assuming these ones are as well and I really need to try and finish these series but both of these are quite chunky so whether I will pick either of them up or go for something else for this prompt we'll see. The first one is We Free the Stars by Hafsa Faisal. Actually this is possibly the book on this list that I want to read the most but it is quite long and that's because it's just over a year since I read the first one and I can still just about remember well enough what happened in the first one to not need to reread it but if I leave it too much longer then I'll have to reread the first one and I don't want to do that if I can avoid it. I did enjoy it but I didn't love it. How much I enjoyed this one will depend on whether I keep 
the series or not because at the moment I don't think I love the first one enough to want to reread the series in the future but we will see when I've read this one so I want to try and get to it quite soon while I can still vaguely remember <laughs> what happened in the first one it's nearly 600 pages so so we will see the other one is one that I meant to read early in this year and then because of health essentially because of my health I decided not to pick it up for a while when my health was bad because of some of the themes on it I just wasn't mentally in the right headspace but I think I probably am now and even though it's quite chunky it should be quite a quick read it's YA it's The Toll by Neil Schusterman this is the final book in the Ark of the Scythe trilogy I was <laughs> taking part in a read along for it a year ago for the series and yeah didn't actually finish the series so this one is 600 and something pages but as I say it's YA and the first two books were really quick reads so I don't think this would actually take that long even though it's very chunky. Again I'd like to finish it, I'd like to read it before I forget too much about the first two books in the series so we will try and get to that one as well. The next prompt is the most ridiculous in terms of options for what I might read. I think for I think for understandable reasons we will see anyway so the fifth prompt is deck the halls this is read a book with a festive word in the title so my original book that I was going to pick up for this was this one Christmas at the Island Hotel by Jenny Colgan I bought this in a charity shop because I've read a few Jenny Colgan books this yeah, and I really love her writing she writes kind of chase to romances there's sometimes a a small hint of smut but not very much which is how I like my romances I'm not good on smut so I saw this in a charity shop I was like I'm having that I love Jenny Colgan Christmas book that will get me nicely in the Christmas mood Christmas bird in the title and then I realized when I added it to Goodreads it is the fifth book in a series and while with romances you can sometimes read them as standalones I think in a lot of these series they have reoccurring characters because I love Jenny Colgan as an author so much I don't want to spoil the earlier books in the series for myself by finding out how the romances work out by reading a later book so I uh, requested the previous books in the series from the library and they all have come in so these are the first four books we've got The Summer Seaside Kitchen, A Very Distant Shore which is a novella, The Endless Beach and An Island Christmas I read Jenny Colgan books really really quickly and one of them is a novella and this one also has Christmas in the title so in theory I could use this for my book with a festive word in the title but to do that I need to read these three first as well these would all also count for the final prompt which is a sweet or cozy read that I'm getting to in a minute but I'm also not very good at back-to-back -back reading series so I don't know whether I will actually attempt to try and read for Jenny Colgan's in a month or whether I might just maybe save them and start reading this series next year and save an island Christmas for next Christmas. I'm not sure, we'll see. So then I had to start thinking because actually finding books with festive words in the title is not always that easy. My next thought was a wintry read that I first heard about on another bookish podcast that I love called Strong Sense of Place. This is The Snow Child by Erwin Ivey. It's set in Alaska in the 1920s. I live in the Northern Hemisphere, therefore we always talk about having a white Christmas. We did actually have some snow overnight, so there was a little dusting of snow on the ground. So for me, snow is a kind of festive word. I think this is loosely based on like a fairy tale. Really keen to pick it up, so this one was my next thought about what I could pick up. Then when I thought a bit more about it, <laughs> I remember that I have a couple of books on my subscriptions TBR list that I could pick up. One has Winter in the title, Winter Flowers by Angelique Villeneuve. It's that kind of in the autumn winter of 1918. So if I read that it would count towards my subscription box TBR goal and an, it's another one that's quite short and should be quite a quick read so that's an option. An even shorter option also which would count towards my subscription TBR goal is The Burglar's Christmas which came in last year's Ninja Book Box advent calendar. So this is very short and if I'm really struggling <laughs> to meet my targets I could well pick this one up because it will take me probably 
I mean, it's like 30 pages to take like half an hour, if that, to read. That's another option. And then the final option is probably the loosest interpretation of this prompt. But one of my other year goals is to increase the amount of books that I read from authors of colour. And so you may have noticed I've tried for every prompt to have an option, at least one of the options be an author of colour. And this was the only prompt that I didn't have that for until I spotted this book on my shelf, which is How Much of These Hills is Gold by C. Pam Zhang. I was thinking that gold is potentially quite a Christmassy word, thinking of like 12 days of Christmas, five gold rings, it's one of the gifts the wise men brought to the baby Jesus. If I'm struggling to hit my diversity targets, I might well pick this one up. I actually don't really know much of what it's about. I got, I won it in a giveaway. I think it's a really beautiful cover. And the American West during the gold rush, apparently, could be really interesting. The sixth prompt is from the film Arthur Christmas, and that is a sweet or cozy read. Two options again for this one. Although some of the books I've already mentioned, as I've said, would fit this prompt. So my two options, I've got one that's set at Christmas which is why I might pick it up. It is Murder on Sea by Julie Wasmer. So this is a murder mystery. I class it as a cosy mystery. It's not like a true cosy, cosy, like cosy mystery, but I don't know, I find, <laughs> I find like this type of mild mystery quite cosy. It's like, it's not a thriller. It's a private detective who keeps finding bodies in her cosy seaside town. It's Christmas season and Pal, the main character, runs a restaurant, but she has also recently set up a detective agency. This is the second book in the series. And then someone starts writing essentially poison pen Christmas cards. And Pearl doesn't want to get involved because she's got too much on, but then someone gets murdered and she finds herself drawn into the mystery, according to the blurb. I really enjoyed the first one in the series I read earlier in the year. I might pick that one up, but I think I'm more likely to pick this other one up, which I got in a charity shop a little while ago. This is called The Reading List by Saranisha Adams. This is a book about books which are the best kind and it sounds really really adorable. It's about a young woman called Alicia who finds a reading list in a library book and it brings her closer. I think it's, I'm not sure if it's if it's her grandfather or someone else's grandfather. It's not entirely clear from the blurb. The blurb says when Alicia discovers a crumpled reading list tucked into a tattered library books it sparks an extraordinary journey. When widower Mukesh arrives at the library, desperate to connect with his bookworm granddaughter, Alicia introduces him to the magic of the reading list, an anxious teenager and a lonely grandfather forming an unlikely book club of two. So I think actually the implication is they're not related. I'll see you when I read it. <laughs> but it sounds really, really adorable. It's a book about books and about the joy of reading. I really love this cover as well. I think it's really cute. So that is probably what I will pick up for my sweet or cozy read. But so many of the books that I've mentioned could work for that prompt. The final prompt, the seventh prompt, is based on the film Elf. And this is a prompt we have every year, which is Yola Book of Flood, which is buy someone a book for Christmas and spend some of Christmas Eve reading. So I've got a couple of people books for gifts. I'm not going to say who in case they watch. <laughs> And I know that my fiancé has got me a couple of books, which is really sweet. Although he does despair about how many books I own. <laughs> and yeah, we're travelling down to my parents for Christmas a few days before Christmas. So I'm sure that we will manage to squeeze in some reading on Christmas Eve, which is really exciting. The final thing I want to talk about in this video is that I mentioned when I did the announcement video that there were two of the films on this list that I hadn't seen before. And I'm very pleased to say that I managed to get DVDs <laughs> because I'm old school, <laughs> of these films on eBay. So one of them is Deck the Halls and the other one is Polar Express. I'm going to watch these as part of my readathon and I will let you know how I get on with watching them as well when I wrap it up. Yeah, looking forward to watching both of these because I've had such good things, mainly in response to me saying I hadn't watched them in my announcement videos. That <laughs> is it for this video. I mean, I'm not going to say it's a massively ambitious TBR unless I try and read all of the Jenny Colgans. That's my potential TBR, my options for what I might read for the Christmas Readathon. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. Let me know if you're joining in the Christmas Readathon and what you might read for it. Or if you just want to let me know that you've been here. I mean, 
there's only certain times of the year we can do this leave me a Christmassy emoji in the comments you can also like this video if you liked it and you can subscribe if you haven't already and you can also follow me on social media that information is in the description box below for you also information about what you need to know about the readathon and Eva's details if you want to check out her content and the link for the Storygraph challenge if you want to join us on that. I think that's everything so thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again soon. Bye!